Now the name of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Livius, whose name was Theodos, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into the city, and into any city of the Samaritans, and to E not, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. And as he go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purse, nor scrip for your journey. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And in and into whatever city or town you shall enter, inquire who it, it, it who in it is worthy, and there abide till he go ends. And when you come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, say, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than in the days of judgment, than for that city. Behold, I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as a dove. Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. Read us. Then the disciple, then the eleven disciples went on to Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had pointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in, the, in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. But baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Amen. Amen. We honor God's word by saying, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be. Without Amen. Amen. Lord bless you for reading, reading such so lovely for us this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Bless His name. Bless His name. Bless His name. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Such a 
privilege to be here to worship the Lord together. Praise the Lord. And I just want to welcome our sister there. What's your name? Sister Brad. The Lord bless you, Sister Marcia. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Welcome. I want to for our candidate from last night yeah, again. Lord bless you, my sister. And our overseer, Edward, and our deacon, Francis and Deacon, Wallace, and all our brethren, and our elder Thompson and teacher, Mr. Uh, I bless you, and my brother that's prayed so lovely for us today, Brother Francis. The Lord bless you. He give you 
how to go through this commission. I'm going back to the first part of it where I asked, I spoke, proclaim the good news. Be on your guard. Do not be afraid because he has given, he's not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of God oh, bless you this morning. Strong mind. Praise the Lord. And um, this afternoon, as we gather, the enemy does like anything that's good. The Bible declares that he comes down with great wrath. And what does he come to do? He comes to kill, to destroy. That's what he comes to do. And you know what? If, we're, if we allow him, he will take away our joy. He will take away our peace. Praise the Lord. He will destroy our family. Because when he can get into our family, he, he will turn things over and that there will be no peace. But I'm glad that before Jesus ascended back to his father, his word declared, my peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as this world give it, give my name. You know what? Because there's no peace in this world. Praise the Lord. And this afternoon, as we anticipated to, to listen and to take in the word of the Lord from the teacher about this commission that Christ has left, that he has given to his disciples, and we also following in, in their footsteps. Praise the Lord. The commission to go in, into all the world. The Lord bless you this afternoon, and may his peace continue to abide with us as we look forward to his return, because he's coming back again. He is coming back again. The scripture declare he is coming back again. And when he comes back, he will pay every man according to their work should be. What did you do with the commission that I've given to you? How did you spend your time? Did you go? Did you pray for the sick? Did you feed the hunger? Did you put the always of peace on the come and ask you? What did you do with the commission that I've given to you? How did you walk in it? Praise the Lord. Did you encourage your brother? Did you see your brother in, in hunger? Did you feed him? He's coming back to ask for it. If you can remember in a parable that he spoken, that he gave the, 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 the good man of the house, he gave uh, 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 um, talents to these people. And the one that got the least, he, he didn't want to do anything with this. He did it. Praise the Lord. But the one that got more, they went out and they accumulate more. They, they do the commissioning. They do the commissioning. So it doesn't matter how small you think you are or what talent you think you have. You have a commission. Go into all the world. Tell somebody you're going to be able to preach like me, I have got a lot of words. But I can pray for you, with you. Praise the Lord. I can encourage you. Praise the Lord. So does every one of us have something that we can do. It 
me. But nevertheless, he has the commission. That will be done. So we too, because Christ has overcome, we too are overcomers. The Lord bless you this afternoon. And we'll just sing one more song and then we'll have a child and I'll call the teacher because we were here yesterday, all day we had a really good day yesterday. Praise the Lord and some of us because the time has, has gone forward, we still kept trying to catch up with it and sleep is the sleeping day. Praise the Lord, but we give God thanks nevertheless because he's never failed. It, it, is, it is declared that he never sleep nor slumber. He's always watching over us. Praise the Lord to keep us in all his way. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord of my soul. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Do you want to praise the Lord with me, brethren? Do you want to praise the Lord with me? Do you want to praise the Lord with me? Do you want to praise the Lord with me? Do you want to bless his name with me? Do you want to praise his name with me? Do you want to glorify his name with me? The Lord of God, the King of Kings, do you want to praise his name with me? Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. creation i'm a brand new man old things are passed away and i'm born again praise the lord my sister number praise the lord blessed are the peacemaker for they shall be called the children of God. Amen. <laughs> my sister francine praise the lord is my strength and my salvation whom shall i fear oh bless the lord my sister marcia oh bless you next to me with her Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What was the other chance for us? Charge. 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 Charge
charge. That the Bible is the shadow of the Almighty. I'll show the Lord in my refuge, my fortress, my God. And he will let us show me. He shall deliver me from the seal of the Father. Amen. Yes. From the night of presence, I call it into faith. And all his wings shall touch his truth. There will be a shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terrible night. No more than the heart of flat by day and the destruction that walks in darkness. A thousand shall fall on the side, then thousand at thy right hand shall not come night. Only with thy eyes shall not be born. I see you reward. The Lord bless you. Lord, thank you, Overseer. Teach your power. The Lord bless you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I'm on it. Sister Daddy. Lord bless you. You need no deal this touch. Deacon. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Amen. Two verse. Amen. 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 Mr. Joy. Oh, bless you. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you, my sister. Sister Angela. A charge. Verse scripture. Amen. Praise the Lord. Deacon Walker, praise the Lord. <laughs> so do you. All right, that's the Lord. Very good to be very good to be. Oh, I love it too. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What's that? Brother Herb, a child son, what are you going to preach? A child. Praise the Lord. This is the God bless you. Word of wisdom. And Ella, tell us, please. Oh, praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, praise the Lord. Can we stand with his brethren? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. As we gather this afternoon and in the presence of the Lord, we can feel his presence with us. We know that he is here. Even by the very fact that even though our voices are not great because we are hoarse and everything, but he is, it's a blessing in every song. That's his song. And whatever word is spoken, there is a blessing. Praise the Lord. So at this time, I'm going to ask Overseer to pray for the teacher for the day. Praise the Lord. Thy precious love and holy Father and the redeeming God. We worship you, we honor, we God. We give you praise, we ascribe all glory, all majesty, and dominion in your hands. No more, so, Father, we thank you that we have come 
the star and our fellowship is soft in him. Therefore, divine manifestation of the resurrection of your son from the dead, who have abolished death and bring him out of the life. According to the lesson that we have before us tonight, the commission that you gave to the church. We pray for your the vessel that you will use this afternoon. And as he has made himself available, he said that if any man speak, they speak as an oracle. Therefore, we know that it is your spirit that moved through the vessel. And as this vessel avails itself to you this afternoon, we come before you that you will work through him. And Lord, help us that our needs will be met. That when we come to the end of the service, our hearts will be filled to give you honor and all the glory that belongs to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're blessed to take the opportunity to greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. Give God thanks for the uh, day that we had yesterday. And today's a new day. I know some of us are tired, including myself. Some of us, the voices are going. But when I saw, I came to church this morning, this afternoon, I saw Leroy Royce here. I was not surprised. <laughs> and then when I saw Brother Lee Royce, this is someone who was only walking in, I wasn't surprised. <laughs> and as you live and you grow with people, and as you live and grow with members of your family, you get to know who's who, and you get to know their characters. And Christ said, my sheep know my voice. And there's a line he quoted, he says, and I know my sheep by name. And what we have in the midst of us is the foundation of the gospel that reach ministry. And it doesn't matter what happens, there's some of us that will not move from the post that God has given us. Give God thanks to Sister Marcia. My name is Edward In acknowledging that you are out today, in spite of know that the clock was going back because you've heard your bodies are tired. And you, like myself, I could have stuck in this step all day. But you're here, and David's word is fulfilled in all of us where it says, one thing that we decide, and that will we seek after, that we will be doing the house of the Lord. And we quote that bit on the, the, the book. The bit afterwards says, this is why I want to be there in house, that I might inquire at his table. So the very fact that you come out, that means there's something you want. Amen. And what is it you want? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded. From the mouth of God. So I'm trusting God today that from the lesson that we have written in the subsequent manual that we use, which the main topic from the book is instructions with an S underline. I've underlined, you know me now. I like to underline the S's because it means more than one. Instruction without an S means there's one instruction. But instructions with an S means there's more than one. So there are instructions for Christian. Disciples and again, disciples has got an S in it, which means more than one. And we're all disciples. There's only one of us here who will be disciple. So there's some instructions and in the lessons for us today. And as I read for it and prayed about it and meditated about it, I understand this. In 10 churches using the same book, there are 10 different conditions. Each church has its own situation and you have the seven churches of Asia and the things that the Lord spoke to each church so that it was different from the other churches so though we could be using the same book there are situations that's for us that's different from the church that we wrote and even in the same church what I love about the Spirit of God is that <laughs> he will take one preacher one teacher and he will speak one message 
but split the message to every person according to their several needs. Yeah. I'll explain. And Jesus stood down one day, and I speak to Brother Wallace about this one, and they questioned him about the woman caught in the act of adultery, and he didn't answer them the way they wanted him. He stood up and made one statement, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Now, when you read it, you find that there were adult men, adult women, young men, young women, young children, young boys, and young girls. And what the scripture says, he stood back down again. And brethren, we need to learn to step back and let the Spirit of God do his job. When we step into his shoes, he will stand back and say, well, since you want to do it, you do it. And we behave. I've been in church since I'm born. And I've watched church folks lead the Holy Ghost. We forget that it states as many as are led. But what we do, we bring African culture into church and we do things and claim leadership by our personal desire and give credit to what we choose to do to the Holy Ghost. In other words, I do something and I'm led to do it. And everybody believes that they are led. But nobody explains what it is to be led. To be led means that you're following something or somebody. That means you didn't choose what to do, where to go, and what to say. Amen. You can't be led if the choice was yours. So if you choose to speak in tongues, I question if you were led. Because my Bible says, they spake in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, Brother Earl is established as a teacher in the church, and I know my ministry. When I hear somebody speaking in tongues, what do you think I wait for? The, the speaking in tongues does not impress me. The interpretation is what edifies me. So if you skip around and speak in the tongues and I'm saying, speak Lord, that's so good, and you don't have nothing to say. You're better off going around the back, speaking tongues on your own because you have no benefit to me because you're a barbarian. Because I don't understand the tongues of men and I don't understand the tongues of angels. This is what instruction in wisdom, which is the second topic, does to someone who gives themselves over to the word of God. It is not enough to just do what we want and claim that we are led. Now back to what Jesus did. Whose job is it to convince the world of sin? This is very true. Who said it? St. John 16 said, when the Spirit of truth has come, he will convict the world of sin, judgment and righteousness. It's not our job to take the place of the Spirit of God. When the Lord starts to bring people into the church, brethren, 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 Leave them to have first taste of the Spirit of God because it is the grace of God, not me and you, that brings salvation. So we're not to force salvation down people's throats because we end up being like the Jews who, unless you be circumcised and keep the law of Moses like we do, you're not saved and we're not to be like that. Back to what Jesus did. He says, I tell you what, he that without skin let him cast the first stone. Watch his wisdom. And then he stooped down. One of the hardest things for people who are in church to do is to do this, Sister Martin. Because to stoop down demonstrate a severe act of humility. Why did he stoop down? Because the Spirit of God was going to do the next stage and Jesus stood, stood out of the way. And the scripture says, when he stood down, they being 
convicted, not by him, because he was now stupid now, but they saw him being convicted by their own hearts. Watch what happened. The Spirit of God took one statement, he that loves him, and let's say there were 10, two adults, two men, two women, two young men, two young women, excuse the fingers, we can tell, and two young children. What the Spirit of God did, he went to every person with one statement, and from that statement, says the Master, he shone a light on their condition, Amen. which was different from each other. Amen. Now, we can't do that. I'll prove it to you. Have you ever heard people say, you're preaching on me? <laughs> you know why they say it? Because the message should be on you. What church folks don't want is the message affecting them. So I will say amen when it doesn't. And preachers are very skillful. But when it affects the preacher, you know what the preacher does? Listen to preachers in church making noise and say amen. And all of a sudden, something went up their street. You don't hear them. You know why you don't hear them? Because that bit is for them. I'm only going to say amen to the people. Don't affect me. <laughs> now watch. Watch this video. He went to the elders first. All of them at the same time. And the youngest person departed. No, it was the other way around. It says, it said from the eldest to the youngest. So you know who left first? The elders left first because they had more sin than the younger person. <laughs> and what gets me to understanding um, is that I could come with a storm. <laughs> when I have conditions with me. <laughs> but what the Holy Ghost will say to you before you throw the stone, check yourself up first. So we have some instructions today for Christian disciples. And as I read for it, what stood out to me was a certain verse which we'll come to, which you'll see as we go down the instruction of wisdom. I'm going to ask you to just hurry across and for me. There's some questions that we need to answer. These 12, Jesus sent and commanded them, saying, Go not in the ways of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans. <laughs> and <laughs> enter ye not. Now, why did he choose 12 and not 15, 9, or 8? Have you ever asked why he chose 12? He chose 12 because the manifestation of the art of Israel was built upon the 12 patriarchs and did never go above that or below that. The foundation is the call of God and Abraham that has been fulfilling Israel to the 12 patriarchs. God bless you, God bless you. So for you to start a church, Thank you, man. Because Jesus, we're Christians, follow Christ. He started the church on 12 members. You don't start the church. A church is not established until you have at least 12 members. And the members become the foundation because we are built upon a foundation. So your foundation members should be your ministers. Yeah. And these ministers should be locked to their command in Jesus. Because when the foundation is low, you know what keeps the tree pan from falling over? Not the trunk, you know, not the branches, not the leaves, not the fruits. You know what keeps the tree? Roots. You know what keeps your house from falling over? The foundation. So foundation members, let us lock it. That's amen. Right. Can someone explain the term, and it's a message that can be preached, the way of the Gentiles? <laughs> now, it's important for us to understand this. 
order for us to understand the lesson, understand the context of the scriptures. So we know about furnishing in 12. What did Jesus mean when he said, don't go into the ways of the Gentiles? What's the way of the Gentiles? What did he mean? Oh, is it? The Gentile is not the elect of God. The Gentile is those that have the inheritance of the fallen nature of Adam, that is without discipline, they're scattered, diverse style of practices. So the Gentile cannot be ministered to because they're, they are Babel people. Those can't use scattering yes, yes. Of, the, of the blood, Babel. Right. Now I'm asking us to remember the topic. Instruction, instructions to disciples. Now, in the same verse, it says, Jesus set forth, and it does say instructed them, but he commanded. A command carries instructions. The instruction is in the command. The command is, thou shalt not. Do not do it. So he says, don't go in the ways of the Gentile. So these 12, when he sent them for coming, they were to preach to no Gentiles. Does anybody know why? Can you hear the scripture? Because they were sent to the lost sheep. So the original foundation members of the church were not to preach to Gentiles, but to preach to only Jews. Yeah. And when you go to the book of Acts, up until Acts, they had only been preaching to the Jews because that's what they were commanded or instructed to do. Right. Come on. Man. And as they went not into the ways of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans. Now, the Gentiles are normal. So who are the Samaritans? Of Jews, where Jews had mixed married Gentiles, so they were like mixed race. They can claim to be Jews, they can claim to be a Gentile. Right. So you have the Jews, the Gentiles were not Jews at all. The German Samaritans are half Jews, half Gentiles. And then he goes on to say, This is where I want you to go to, but rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the 12 tribes that obviously are mentioned, the 12 apostles were chosen in conjunction with 12 and they were only supposed to go to Israel. So at this moment when he commanded them, they were given specific instruction of who to go to and who not to go to. And as they went, they were given instruction to do certain things. And one of the things in verse seven, Go and preach. Now, if they were told not to go to Samaritans and Gentiles, they were told by Jesus not to preach to no Gentiles. Can I ask you to raise your hands today because the Gentile is now preaching to the Gentile <laughs> because that got changed down the line. And I worship God because of it. I wish I had the time. <laughs> what you want to say? I'm not doing this. One of these days, we want to preach on the, the priesthood of Melchizedek. Because we're in a foretaste of it, because we are not Jews. Amen. This priesthood is a forerunner, Sister Marcel, of the Melchizedek priesthood. Amen. And if we are faithful over it, we will get, we will enter into that eternal priesthood, which is not the Levitical priesthood. Because if he was on earth, he could not be priest. And I'm talking about Jesus now. And then Jesus as a Jew could not be priest because he's from the lineage of Jabin and not the lineage of Levi. That my you and I, literally according to the flesh, us within the Levitical prison, could not be called by the earth, Pastor Brown, Pastor Brown, always say it, but it's not. We wouldn't, we, it, we, we have to sit down and listen. So when you find you have a ministry now, it's a foretaste of Melchizedek priesthood. Because concerning Jesus, it is said, it is written, Thou art a priest forever 
They're no longer a prisoner in maximum security prison, but you're on a path. And you need to know who you are, where you're going with that. You're on a path to become a priest, not for just down here, Amen. but forever. Let me say to you like that, the Spirit will say to Jesus, thou art a priest forever. After which order? Not after the order of our enemies or evil, but you are a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's going out of this. So you're supposed to preach. And one of the main messages that we're supposed to preach is Tyler in verse 7. We're supposed to preach about the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And sad to say, listen to TV programs, listen to preachers. And get a pen and a big paper card and listen to them for a month or so and write down how many preachers preach about heaven. And that's the first message in preaching. Right. <laughs> to these words. And I don't, over half the preachers today, you can't sit down and hear somebody preach about heaven. You know why? Because their minds are not in heaven. When you hear a man preach, judge him by what he preach is where his mind is. By the message from the preacher, you will tell where his mind is. If he's preaching about prosperity on the earth, Sister Master, that's where his mind is. If he's preaching to you <laughs> about the cherubims, <laughs> about the throne, Trying holy, and the heaven is sitting down there hearing the angel cry holy. And they say, What you were holy? And they said, This seat don't mean nothing to us. They get back, they see, they take off their gun and they throw it down. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and elders said to him, They say, Amen. When you hear a preacher talking about that, that's where his mind is. But when you hear a man saying, Go and get as much as you want, accumulated, and don't tell you that even if you get it, you're going to die, you can tell me. Yeah. Let's go down from the beast. I'm not even looking one verse in the book. <laughs> right, I might have to skip through something this week. To preach the kingdom, heal the sick. Matthew 10, 8 to 10. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely receive, freely give, provide neither curse. So provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass. In your verse. Can someone explain that verse first? What does it mean to buy neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your verse? I'm the first. And the first is to carry wood. And silver. <laughs> and silver. <laughs> 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 oh, no. This is just counting already. But according to Jesus, he told those who go to preach that when you go to preach, don't carry gold, no silver, no brass in your purse. He didn't say you don't carry a purse. He says, don't carry gold or silver. Let me explain one of the interpretations of that. You're not going out there to preach for gold. You're not going out there to preach for money, silver. That should not be your main objective. I'm not coming to cheer your church to preach until you fill in this form and you're going to pay me X amount. And if you can't pay me 10,000, I ain't coming because I'm preaching for money because I'm worthy of it. A man judge is worthy of it. So he said, what's my value? I'm a good preacher. I know Torah. My cost for the day is a thousand pounds an hour. I need to put that in my purse. <laughs> then he says, I'm still don't carry no script. Now, 
Does anyone know what it mean by no script? No writing pad. So you go, you go a writing pad, and you got a script, right? So it says you don't carry a message. Yeah, is that what we think it means? And we turn, does it mean don't carry no script? Right. Now, if you're not carrying no, I mean, use no pre-prepared message, we interpret that as then carrying no script. Right. So that means you're going to go to a city to preach and you don't know what you're going to preach. Yeah? <laughs> but you've already been told what to preach. Amen. You must preach the kingdom. Yes. To carry no script means that you don't go and preach a message that you have created. Yes. Because you're already told what to preach. Preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So you've really got the message already. But you've got pre-prepared message on how to make your business prosper. <laughs> For your journey. <laughs> Neither take two coats off. I've got a coat, I'm going to preach it. And then I said, which one should I take? So the Lord, the Lord said to me, according to this verse, I should only take one coat. Neither two pair of shoes. Wow. Neither two stars. Oh. Two stick. You have a stick? Yeah. There you go. I'm getting up here stick, isn't it? Did she pray? I said, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> Leaning upon her staff. <laughs> like, <laughs> now, so the messenger knows he's been sent. He's not to have his own message prepared for his journey. And he's not supposed to be going out there with more, you know, suitcase of fancy clothes to change. Because what went he out to see? A man called him fine raiment. And who was the greatest of all the prophets? And what did he wear? And what did he eat? You know, all these one day preachers, which one of them would get up there, got them with camel skin and go see? And eat honey. No, no, sir, it has to be cabin. Five star hotel. The room has got to be a certain temperature. Otherwise, I'm not going in there. So that's why they can't preach like John. <laughs> they suppose that gain is godliness. For the workman is worthy of his meat. So basically, you go carry a message. And if God has really sent you, he will provide a place for you and whatever you need. If your student boss or your court rip, he will allow somebody to provide for you. Didn't God feed you? The prophet by raven in the time of famine. So true ministers trust God on their journey. Scroll down for me, please. Thank you so much. Right, and Matthew 10, 11, 13. And in towards of a city or town, he shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go. Yes. And when he come into an house, salute the house. So if I come to your house, Mother Bernie, I must salute your house. Seriously, when I come to church, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house, Lord. Brother Gary, God bless you. When Zachariah was going into the temple, somebody told him, oh, he, he was told by the Spirit, that Jesus was in the temple to be christened, Sister Joy. And I love the utterance that says, and Zachariah came by the Spirit 
to the synagogue. Let me tell you the best way to go to church, not just to be glad, but when you get up on Sunday morning when you sleep, <laughs> when you're coming to church, come by the spirit. That's why when it's all right, I go by, he goes, I don't know how to go to church. He said, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving. <laughs> And I will enter his courts with praise. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm tired of I had a long day yesterday in church. But I want to be back again. And I know that God is going to give me another piece of bread because he told me to get up on Monday, get up on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But I come to church today, Sister Master, to send people together. You're not supposed to be there empty. No. no, because when you go out there tomorrow, that which you receive, that which you receive is going to keep you. So I salute the house. When, when Elizabeth went up to Mary's house and she heard the voice of Mary, the child leaped in her room and she saluted the house. <laughs> when she heard the salutation, John saluted the house of the child leaping. <laughs> Joy. Joy. And that's why, you know what, it is a pleasure to see you all today. And like I said, I'm tired, but you know what, you're a very blessed brethren. And uh, what, what, what you're hearing this lesson today, God will bless you. And we minister according to your position in Christ. The, the more you love God, is the further God will take us. Amen. So when you hear Brother Earl, get up and start opening up the scripture, you cause it. Yeah. It is for your sake. Can I say something on behalf of the ministry of the The church. Who's greatest in the church? The persons who serve the table or those who sit? Can I stand up and say, for those of you, those who sit are greater than those who serve. The ministers are your servants. Because you don't want to say certain things to certain people yeah. if they're not worthy to hear it. Because you might be thinking do, do good and you might be saying the wrong things. Now, it could be your little house. Again, I use Mother Lolly. I go to her house and I find out. In her house, there's one person in her house, correct me if I'm wrong, that is worthy Word. to hear Word. well done. <laughs> Thou good and faithful. Sometimes you're the only one in the house that is faithful. Faithful to death, said our loving master. A few more days to labor and wait in the toys of the world will see us nothing when we sweep through. 
the pearly gates. Hallelujah. Right. It might be well fixed when I hear you're worthy to receive a crown of life. Now, before I leave this verse, let not my beast now. What is your beast? See what you're doing to me, Bridget? Your love for God is drawing me. What is your peace? Now, we cannot. Jesus, when he said, my peace, I give. I leave unto you. My peace, I leave with you. But you're not just to have his peace. According to Jesus, as we read, if you come to a house this morning, so you come to church this morning, you sit with us. You're supposed to let your peace rest. So though it's, there's no cushion on the chair, you need to feel comfortable. You need to feel like you're at home. You, may, you need to feel like I'm left wherever I live, but it's like I'm at home. It means that your peace is here. You didn't leave your peace at home. You carry your peace on your journey. And when you come in there, you feel like holy. Every church you go to, you should find that your peace should say, yes. And even if it's not church, even if it's in Bridget, if you ever go, go to some people's house and you can't wait to get off, you get funny feeling like Sometimes they're not in Bridget, they're just people you know. Are you going to... It just, it, it, it just feels like, I don't understand it. You don't want to. Your peace won't settle. But when you walk into the house like Simeon, <laughs> and he picked up the child, here's Simeon. Oh, now let us, thy yes. servant depart in peace. Oh, God, brethren, let me say this to you. When we close our eyes in death, before we close our eyes in death, let peace, peace be in your heart. That when you give up the ghost, you don't give up your peace. Hey, we'll see me. Now let us, my servant, depart in peace. Because my eyes have seen the salvation. Quickly. He said, my peace I leave on you. This is the calling of order. Yes. And the New Testament is your peace. So what you need to do is take the two pieces yeah. and put them together yeah. and you have a complete. Yeah. So when I lie down in the boat <laughs> and the storms of life are raging, <laughs> let me use Jesus because he's your He's the one you should follow. He was asleep in the boat because he had his peace and he had God peace. And as he lie down, the winds of blow, the breakers of dashes, but the two peace become one because at the mouth of one peace, nothing is established. Hey, 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 Jesus giving you peace and you don't have none. It's not complete. But when he gives you his peace and you lock it with your peace, then your peace is complete because he will keep you in perfect peace. In a perfect peace. But you've got to do something if you keep your mind stayed on him. And if you find your mind wandering and you've been tossed to a your mind, it's because you're not keeping your mind stayed upon him. Quickly, please, please. <coughs> right. Matthew chapter 10, verse 14, 16. And whatsoever, whosoever shall receive you, shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. I'm not even going to comment on that, I'm going to leave that. Verse 15. Very I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom or in the day of judgment than for that city. Chocolate. Verse 16, behold, I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore. Now, we often
often heard the quote, go ye therefore and preach. But you hardly hear anybody take up the other part of, which says, be ye therefore. And there's quite a few be ye therefore. Be ye therefore holy as easily. But there's another bit that's a hard to hear. And it says this, be ye therefore wise. You say this, Jesus is telling the foundation of the church, you need wisdom. You need to be wise. And then he's gonna tell you how. And the serpent was more subtle than all the creatures of the field. This was before the devil got into him. God gave the serpent when he had his two legs, wisdom above all creatures. And Solomon hit the nail on the head and got God's attention when he didn't ask for riches, but he asked for wisdom. And God looked at him and said, oh, you get it now. Because I created the sun by wisdom. I created the moon by wisdom. I created the stars by wisdom. I created all things visible and invisible by wisdom. And you almost get it now. You're asking for that which is a part of me. And God blessed Solomon because he asked for wisdom. And Jesus looked at the disciples and said, wisdom you need, be ye therefore wisdom. Because what wisdom will help you do is to be as wise as a serpent. And at the same time, our blessings and love. Let's have a look at wisdom. Show that one, please. Instructions to the disciples. Solomon studied wisdom, and in the book of Proverbs 1, verse 5, it says this A wise man will hear. And when you hear and will increase the learning, be careful of any spirit that knock learning. Because Jesus, the wise man, says, you need to grow in grace. Or the scripture says, you need to grow in. Now, as you grow, it means you increase. Don't follow spirits that allow you to be locked at stage one, babe. And when the time you ought to be teachers, you still have need to be taught the principle. That means you lack wisdom in growth. Primary to secondary. I teach, I mean, I'm not teaching, but I'm in, a, I'm in an old school school. Four years old to 18. You would not expect an 18 year old child who's gone through the education system to be in the same mental mind as a four year old child. Grow in grace and in the knowledge. So a wise man will increase in learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel, instructions for Christians. Do you know that if you follow Jesus, you'll be wiser than what you was before you got converted? Amen. They took note that the disciples were unlearned men. But when Philip opened his mouth, they could not withstood the wisdom by which he spoke. <laughs> and Paul. A Pharisee of the Pharisee, when the scales was removed from his eyes, his wisdom of the Old Testament, he realized, I don't know nothing. And when the scales fell from his eyes and the scriptures opened up to him, he said, Oh, wretched man that I have. He said, I count all things but lost. All that I learned before is nothing. He said, Oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And he said, Why have I knew before? I count it but dumb that I may gain. What a wonderful, 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 wonderful utterance that I may gain the excellency of all the mass, all the English, every degree, diploma. No, 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 no. He said, I may gain the excellency. What a thing to strive for. The excellency of the knowledge of Christ. And let me tell you something, 
again. He got to the stage where he attained to it. He said, I know a man. <laughs> Whether he won it or not, I don't know. He was talking up to the third heavens. Yeah. And he said, he saw things that you can't tell everybody because his knowledge so us. Let me tell you something, you can attain unto place in God whereby he take you somewhere that you can't even tell me what you see. John saw some things that he was about to write it when the seven thunders uttered. And when the thunders uttered, John understood the thunder and he was going to write what he understood from the thunder. God said to him, no, don't write it. And if all the things that Jesus did and said was written in a book, you couldn't, couldn't, you couldn't Oh, the depths and the riches of God. Who can contain? Who can I search in? Find out Jehovah. Who can find out my Jehovah Jireh, my Jehovah Salom, my Jehovah Supreme? Please see, who can I search in? Find him. So, what a wise man will hear. Listen now. What Jesus says to the wise, and you'll know if you're wise. First thing, it's a joy. He said about the wife, he said, My sheep here. You should not get up and wait till Sunday to hear the ministers preach to you. But morning by morning, if you don't hear the Lord God speaking to you at your own, at your work, then you said, No, something was wrong. Because when he was on the cross and God, God did this to him. That's what I pray, brother. He said, wait a minute. He said, why hast thou forsaken me? I got Monday morning and I don't hear from God, something wrong. I got Tuesday morning and I don't hear from God, something wrong. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, said, I have to wait till Sunday to hear from God. No, my sheep. Yeah, my voice. Not just the preachers in the church. My sheep hear my voice. Ah, so morning by morning, God should see your instructions. He know the way you take. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Does anyone know what it means by the principal thing? Most important. Most important. The most important. What does the word principal mean? Because we got the principles of the doctrines of Christ. Yeah? We got principalities and powers. And now we're talking about the principal thing. Now, in respect to knowledge and understanding, because they're different, you have wisdom, you have knowledge, and you have understanding. Out of the three, wisdom is the principle of the three. Because you can have knowledge, and if I have wisdom, I'll outsmart you. You could be a singer, but you can't manage your fear. A man with wisdom who can't sing to save his life will come along and be your manager and make more money than you. <laughs> Sign a contract, the accountant has wisdom to make profit of what you get. So here's wisdom. I have an amen, and you never want me to give it to you. Here's my wisdom, you ain't getting it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's wisdom. Here's the devil. If I will worship me, I will give you all this. Watch his wisdom. I want to give you all the powers of the world just for your amen, your hallelujah, your thank you, Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, I'm not giving you a worship. I'm not giving you a thanksgiving. I'm not hollering you. I'm not buying that before you because there's only one person that is worthy of all glory, all majesty, all praise. He said, you know what I'm going to tell you? Get some wisdom, Satan. Get down behind me. <laughs> wisdom is a principle out of knowledge and understanding. Therefore, church, Christians, get wisdom. And with all I get in, you need to get understanding because wisdom will open up understanding to you. Wisdom taught me that there's waters above the firmament that's above the moon and the stars and there's water above it. I did learn that too. The knowledge of God's word 
Wisdom taught me that when the day is of Noah, the windows of heaven was open and water came down and the floods came up. Proverbs 9, verse 9. Get instruction. Instruction for Christians. Give instruction to a wise man. And what will he do? He will remain at the same stage he was 20 years ago. He will be wiser still. Watch wisdom. Three wise men came from the east and followed the star. One little demonic man, Herod, who was being inspired by the serpent who had no legs now, said, go and find a place where he worship, where he is, and bring me back where that and tell me where I can come and worship. People use wisdom to commit murder. But whilst these wise men slept one night, the angel of the Lord appeared to them and gave them instruction. Go not the way. <laughs> Go not the way that you came. So they took a night to the <laughs> Give instruction to a wise man and he will yet be wise. Teach a just man and he will preach. There was a just man called Joseph. He looked at his wife to be, found out she was with child and it wasn't his. And wisdom in his justness says, I'm going to make her a perfect example. I'm going to make everybody see how she is. But what wisdom did with his justness, instruction in his justness, instruction instructed Joseph, don't make a public example of her. Don't belittle her in public. Wisdom instruction was given to Joseph. So Joseph lied down and angel spoke to him and says, Fear not to take Mary, your wife. So instruction was given to Joseph, a just man, and he took the damsel and the child and brought him up as if it was all. He was called Joseph's son, the carpenter's son. And as a result, you have to suffer for being wise sometimes because. Hear what they said concerning Jesus. He's the seed of fornication. In other words, it's Joseph and Mary's son. They had him before they got married. That's what it meant to him. He said he's the seed of fornication. He was born outside of bedlock, but he never lost. Please, please. Right. This is the verse. This is where it's got the instruction of wisdom. Listen now, Bridget. The fear <laughs> of the Lord is, is not the end, not the middle. Is, is. It's the beginning, brother Paul, or the start of knowledge. So even though you don't have no big qualifications, you don't need a level math, English, and all them science, and don't make nothing make you think that you're you're dumb because you don't have those kind of qualifications. Remember, from the sheepfold to the king, God took a man from being a shepherd to being the king. God took Joseph out of the pit to be the prime minister in Egypt. It's not by might. <laughs> it's not by power, but by God's spirit. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 15, 33 says, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. You and I go out one day, doing our own thing, living our own life, doing what we do right now. And somebody said, wisdom to instruct us, to make us see who we are, where we're coming from, where we're going, and our, what our end will be. And in our hearts, we knew, let me use myself, 15 years old, going to church on my born, wasn't safe. More than one church is on visit on a Sunday. I'm just a church girl, wasn't safe. There's a lot of people going to church, not safe. It's just, then it becomes a tradition. Wisdom instructed my heart that you need to make a decision to commit yourself to Christ. And I didn't do this at home at church. In my room, 
I had a Sunday school rib Bible that I won for church, some school attendance. I picked it up in my room. And when I looked at the various churches and looked at the churches I visit, I said, you know, they're all preaching different things, but they have one thing in common. And if you want to understand why God heard this, how easy the word of God, because I picked up the Bible in my room and said this, but I go to all these churches, they might be teaching different things, but they have something in common, the Bible. I picked up the Bible in my bedroom, 24 Junction Road, Tottenham, London, in 79 HE. <laughs> I even remember the postcode. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I will serve you according to this book. And I prayed, Lord, help me to reach a state that even in a daily conversation, I will quote scripture. And I gave my parents trouble. Because brethren, I'm a teenager talking in the conversation, my parents quote in scriptures. And I was going to get into trouble for it. Because they're my parents and I'm quoting scriptures. I'll give an example. I tried to explain to my mom that the reason why women was having a conversation and she was saying, I can't even nine months and wait a pain. I said, Mom, the reason why women go through the pain is because of transgression. So I'm a sinner now. I went through that. I wasn't calling my mom a sinner. But I learned the difference between words leaving a man's mouth and it got that long. And by the time it leaves your mouth, you go from here to there, the devil can take it and twist it to the next person who's hearing it. Brethren, learn it. Mind what you say to certain people. Find out who's worthy because you could be saying the right thing to the person. But by the time you get to their ears, it's the master, the devil take it and twist it differently for how you say it. The fear of the Lord is the instruction in wisdom, and before honor, there's humility. So wisdom taught Christ this. Just answer them and say, he that loves him, stoop back down. In other words, he humbled himself after making the utterance and left the rest to the Spirit of God to do. They didn't leave because he was onto them, no. He was leaving them, and the Spirit of God was convicting their hearts. It was says, Proverbs 2, verse 6, the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understand. So wisdom is something that God gives. And I'm going to come back to that shortly. Please go. I'll go. I said, Susan, not up. Right. You should have this. The divine nature. If you take off, take the word D, fine, and take off the words of it, just leave it D. And take off T U R E of nature. Get rid of the. You're going to end up with what? Let me say it. Get rid of the T H. Take the vine and take off I D E N E. So you just left with D. So you just have D now. Then go to nature and take off A T U R E. Now leave the A and add the N A to the D. What do you got? You end up with just D N A. Does anyone know what DNA is? What is DNA? According to man. Say early. By swabbing even just your mouth and breaking down the particles, the cells, they can determine your DNA. But let me tell you that they can't put God's DNA in a test tube bottle because God's DNA is divine nature. Now listen carefully. Peter, and I need you to understand this, Peter. Does anybody know? Tell me about Pete, Peter's character. Before reading this. Tell me two things about Peter, you know. He's what? A hot temper. Yes. Anything else? Very forward. God bless you. Now, we've been hot tempered and very forward. Is Peter now writing this? Listen what Peter wrote. The hot tempered man wrote this one. He said, Grace and peace be multiplied. 
He starts to speak like Paul now in Corinthians. Grace be unto you, peace be unto you. All of a sudden, Peter's being polite. Hot tempered man. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. And he tells you, how? How do you get grace and peace? You should get grace and peace through the knowledge. So when you're reading your Bible, Sister Navet, at home, grace and peace should come out the page and lodge in your heart. When you come to church and somebody's singing, amazing grace, I'll see that grace and peace should come out the song and go in their heart. When the preachers teach and preach, grace and peace should come to you through the knowledge. So the more knowledge you get, guess what you get? More grace and peace. <laughs> the knowledge of God and the knowledge of he don't say it there, but it means that. And the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen now. According to his divine power. So not only divine nature, but God's divine power. You need to know what you're called into now. You're not just called to come to church and someone will sing to someone and go back and teach. And then come back and teach and sing to someone and go be my son and king. And come back and the whole month you just come to church and sing to someone and make my son and king. No, no, no. It's not your car then. Your calling is not your calling. <laughs> Let me tell you also about our calling. You go home with the sons and your calling. According to his divine power, has he given, Mother Dolly, to us yes, things that pertain to life, brother God, and godliness. So the things that pertain to life and godliness is through the knowledge of him. So the preachers, the teachers, your ministers, your servants should sit you down and order you, feed the flock over which the Lord has made us overseers, servant overseers, that you be partakers of the divine nature through the knowledge of him that has called you. And not to rise and piece of chicken. But joy. We've been called to glory and virtue. This is not calling you from Jamaica to England now. You know? You've been called, Sister Sonia, from glory from, to glory and virtue. So when you come up here, my name come up here now because you're gonna get lost. If the spirit of God is here, if the glory of God is in the place, you're going to come up here. You're going to get locked. You might not even come up here because that's why I want the angel run right at under there, but one glory is in the place. And when you come up here, when I come up here, we must hear the bell ring. Yes, 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 yes. I stood here watching this morning and I was like, no, you, you, you knew what was going on. I said, I can't move. And then all of a sudden, I'm celebrating, but I, just, I have to praise God. Amen. Church ain't full enough. Who needs a full church to praise God? All I need is two or three. Because they're too shy green to say amen. amen. And the angel looked at the other angel and said, Holy. And the angel said, Yes, Holy. So we be poor. He's called us to glory and virtue. I need to remember the word virtue because we're going to kind of show it. There's more than virtue. Virtue means intelligence. Whereby we are given, is it, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. And for those on Zoom, like our overseer by I know he's listening to clear right now. One of the exceeding and great and precious promises is that we have a new body. Reserved. <laughs> Though the outer man, the outer house of this tabernacle is crumbled, and the inner man is renewed, but if the early house of this body is out, we have an eternal body reserved in the heavens. Exceeding and great promises. By, and that by these, we might be partakers. It's very important now. These words or the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ is given to us. That's why men who preach must make sure they tell you God's word. The ministry is given for the perfecting of the saints. How shall they preach except they be sent? 
and who are they sent to? They sent to the people of God. Why are they sent to the people of God? That they might be partakers. If you don't remember nothing I say today, Sister Master, Sister Sharon, Sister Nabba, you've been called out of darkness to put on God's nature. Sister Daryl, you've been called. Carly, Mother Dolly, Sister Dabin, you're going to get a little fight, you know, because what you've been given is the given you to take you into the partakers of a thing called the divine nature. Why do you think you get so much fight? That's why you have to contend for the faith that is in you. Because if you don't, we have this treasure. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. Right, speak. Slow down. Right. When we speak of the divine nature, listen to what Paul says now, because there's other natures. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, talking about human beings, or the children of God, he, Christ, also took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Yeah. So what did he? Now Paul's going to explain about this divine nature. Listen carefully. Hebrews 2 verse 16. Yeah. For he, verily he, Jesus, took not on him Do you know? Yeah, yeah. Brother, what, what a topic to teach on in Bible study one day. The nature of angels. Can somebody tell me two things that's attributed to the nature of angels? They have got cover up a body. Yeah. That means they will what? They will never die. They will not death. Give to everyone. Worship, worship, they worship. They only worship God. But let me tell you one that we understand. They don't go to the altar and say, I do. Let me see the hands of those who are married in here. We are not angels. If we were angels, guess what we wouldn't do? And let's be careful of teaching sanctification and behaving like we're angels when we're not. Because if we wasn't digging into some of our behavior, we'll really prove that we're not angels. Stop behaving like you're angels, because if you get married, you're not an angel. Then the church say amen. <laughs> so when Christ came in, he didn't take on the nature of angels. So nature of angels. You can study angels and look at their nature, and you'll find out in the resurrection. We're going to be like them. But not now. Some preachers want to teach their brethren to be like angels now. But Jesus didn't take the angel, they took the angel. So if you're following Jesus, you don't take on the nature of angels when you're in this physical body. And anybody teaches that you must live like as an angel now. That's why there's so much problems in the Catholic Church because they have these women living like angels and when they come, that don't work. It don't work. Some of them men won't even leave the little children them alone. <laughs> but both of them said it. Yeah. But he, this is what he did. But he took on him the nature of the seed of Abraham, which is the nature of Adam. So he didn't have an angel's nature when he was here being tempted. He had the nature that you had. Amen. He was in all points tempted Amen. as we are. Yet, with the same nature of Abraham or Adam, he had to overcome, leaving us an example. I'm going to close shortly. Please, please. Right. Peter now, the man who can't control his temper, who has sword, even when he's an apostle, he still has a sword. But Jesus said to him, you know why you can't control the temper? You're ready to fight. And some of them want to go down. 
thunder, the thumbs of the two sons of thunder was because he wasn't converted yet. But Jesus looked at him just before he left and said, When thou art converted, that's when the things change because now you're not because you get it. If the any man be in Christ, is you be a wonderful savior. He made a man an apostle, and the man wasn't his savior. Hey. What kind of Jesus is make a man an apostle? If Judas was made an apostle and he knew that he was going to be trained, would you appoint someone to the ministry knowing that he's going to be, he's going to send you? You see the Jesus we serve, he's got a divine nature. His divine nature would allow him to know from the beginning who's going to betray him and still let him kiss him. But wisdom taught him to say, Woe to the one. <laughs> Woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. First, second reading chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. And beside this, Peter went on to say, Remember, we're called to glory and virtue. Now, here's the rule it's all had to. And beside this, giving all diligence from God, had to. The word had to means you read one scripture today, you're going to have another one tomorrow. Apparently, if you read four chapters a day, you read the whole Bible in one year. I tried it, it didn't work. It's not that it didn't work. I wanted to read with the understanding. So, what, what to me, I didn't want to just read to say, I'll read the Bible for you. That's, 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 what's the point of reading? Did, I got to the verse that Jesus said, let him that read it understand him. So, I had what I read it because I wanted to understand it. I will understand at the pace that God would have me to understand because the revelation of Paul said that was given to me. I didn't receive it of men. And he says that I pray you might understand my knowledge in the mystery of the fellowship. Brother Earl does not know everything. There is no preacher that knows everything. The only person that has the right to claim that they know everything is the man from Galilee named Jesus Christ of another because God has given him the spirit without measure. In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead body that in all things he might have the preeminence. And God has given him the name of a whole man. Add to your faith. So, brethren, put your hands if you've got faith. Right. You mustn't just have faith alone. You've got to add to your faith. Add to your faith virtue. Oh. When a woman touched the hem of his garment, hear him. Who took my virtue? He said, I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And in order for her to get in, they pulled the virtue. She had it to her faith virtue. And that's why she got healed. You must touch Christ, not just say, Lord, please touch me again. But sometimes you must touch him. But you're going to ask, who touched me this morning? Who touched me in church today? We come to church on Sunday morning, Brother Gary, and we sit down and the preacher's preaching, and the preacher gets a touch because he has him feel good. But did you touch him as well? Because Jesus Christ asked you to touch him. Have to your faith virtue. So you now got faith, and you now got virtue. But had to virtue, knowledge. So now you've got faith, virtue, knowledge. But don't stop, had to. <laughs> and to your knowledge, you have temperance. Listen, you can get hot tempered more than me. And the Lord told me, you know, it's not what people do to you that is the problem, it's how you react to it. Stop trying to control 12 people, the Lord told me. You only need to control you. Let them spit in your face, but don't react. Let them put the crown of thorns around your head, but don't react. Let them put a whip across your back, but don't react. It's not what they do that counts, it's what you do. Nah, they don't like me, so what? You must like them, love your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you and say, oh, I'm not even against you. For the high virtue, temperance, not going nowhere. I give my heart to God and I'm not taking it back. Thy vows, oh God, are upon me until death. What shall separate me, says the Master, from the Lord? Shall distress, shall people's tongue, shall famine, shall nakedness? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. So I need temperance. 
And oh God, do we need to have patience to temperance? Me not have patience. <laughs> I don't have no patience. I want it, want it now. <laughs> but oh, oh somebody said, you can't hurry up. You've just got to wait. You've got to trust him and give him time. Oh no, more long it is. He said, you know what? He may not come when you want him. But have you ever proved him that he's always on time? <laughs> so I need He still don't know. That's such lady saying. He still don't know. And I need patience. Yeah. And it don't stop. I'm going to have to that again. Yes. Godliness. Do you know that godliness with contentment is a great gain? I have a poem and I can't satisfy. So how am I going to manage if I lose the pound? <laughs> All right, I got a hundred pound and I can't satisfy. Then I lose a hundred pound. Now I'm going to be in problem. But if I have a pound and I can satisfy, and then I get 50 pound and I stay satisfied, when I lose the 50 pound and come down to nothing, if I have godliness, this is what would happen. The Lord give it. And the Lord take it away. I will still be able to say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because Paul says, I know I've learned how to obey. <laughs> no, Why are you spending money buying shoes when you have a hundred of them already? <laughs> you have a hundred pair of shoes. And you only have two foot. <laughs> I see it and I like it. <laughs> Do you need it? <laughs> Why spend me money on that which is not me? Do you know you're better off buying a bag of Christmas sharing it with me than buying another pair of shoes? <laughs> I'm not telling you nothing about the shoes, but he will supply our needs. And let me say, Brendan, put your hands up right now if you're in need of anything. What are you in need of? No. Nothing. I'll tell you what I need, which is not common. I need you. I need you. Every hour. I need you. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to So I'm learning to be confident. And if riches does increase and you've got godliness, don't set your heart on it. Daniel sat in the gate. But he learned from Mordecai. <laughs> and to godliness, hear what now? Brotherly kindness. How can you sit down next to your brother and he's hungry and you don't offer him some of your food that you got? Brother kindness will allow you to give your brother before he asks you. <laughs> Do they, I didn't give him because they didn't ask. No, you didn't give him because you're mean. <laughs> he that sees his brother in need, don't wait for his brother to ask him for help. We are one another's people. And to brotherly kindness, charity. You see, it takes you the whole lot of when you start handing from virtue right now, let me try and close. It takes you to a total different thing because you're now putting on the nature of it. Is there another one, Lee? Yeah. Is there, this is the last one? Uh, right, okay, last one. Now, my brethren, this is the sum of the message. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse or different temptation. Think about what you're going through. And what you went through yesterday, what you go through today, and you will go through things tomorrow. What is the reason for them? Knowing this, we need to understand why we went through what we did yesterday, why we went through what we did today, and what we're going to go through. There's a reason why we're going through and going through, as we said. Here's the reason. Knowing this, that the trial of your faith 
is working. Patience. Then it takes you back into all the add-ons. So when I'm going through something, I need you to understand what I've been forced to understand. I must not try to get rid of my child because it's working something. And if you don't understand why God allowed us to go through things, you will despise what you're going through. But what you're going through is to teach you something. Because the captain of our salvation, Brother Gary, was made perfect through suffering. And he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So know this, that the trial of your faith, whatever you're going through, work at patience and add to your patience virtue and all that kind of stuff. That's what we are drinking of. Let, but let patience have its perfect work. So you know what's happening? Sister Martha, God is going to let you go through some things that I don't know about. And he's going to let me go through certain things, even though we need to And I'm going to say, God, why are you allowing this to happen to me? He's trying to teach me something. And hear what I got taught. Until I learn it, it will go around and come back. Have you ever wondered why my God seems to be going through the same problem over and over again? Look away from the problem and look to God and say, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What am I not learning? There must be something to learn from the experience that I'm having. But let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. As I close, our situation that we face, regardless of what it is, and it differs from one each person to the other, is to make us perfect. But if we don't see that, we take it the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. It's not with the devil, it's God trying to perfect us. And even if he allowed the devil to do, do a certain thing like he did with Job, he's a perfect man. They show evil. And God put him truth in the test with the devil. Here God to the devil. You see how you he holds his integrity, though you move at me against him. You think God's gonna allow the devil to move against Job and down allow the devil to move against you? Carly, your situation is not Sister Dell. Sister Dell, your situation is not Sister Carly. Sister Carly, Sister Dell, your situation is not Mother Chicholi. Sister Chicholi sits down and then she don't tell you what she's going through. You ain't gonna know. Well, hear what I said. What she's going through. 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 That's We're going through. Here's the last one. If any man had that, we still. Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. Let us pray. Amen. Eternal God, your word has just told us that if we lack wisdom, we should ask of you. And though we've asked of you this before, wisdom has taught us that if you instruct a wise man, he will increase in learning. And therefore, with the little wisdom that we have and you've given unto us, we ask you, please, can we have a little more? Can I have a little more wisdom to deal with situations at home within my family? A little more wisdom to deal with situations at work with my colleagues and my employers and my employees that I work with? And even so, for a bit more wisdom within the family of the church, grant me and grant us wisdom in these areas. We can never say it is enough because you've told us to add to. And I pray for my brethren today who are going through various things. And I pray that you cause them in the spirit to understand that you know the way that they take and you will not allow them to be tempted above that which they are able to bear. So that which they're going through, you allow it so that we can either add to or to teach us something because it pleased you to bruise your son. But whilst you were bruising him, we thank you today that he was made perfect through suffering. And the little 
like afflictions that we have, we face. Not even some of us are not even resisting unto blood, striving against sin. Help us to allow your will as we say in the prayer that your soul taught us. Our Father, which heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Not mine, not ours, but let thy will be done. The things that we're going through, whether it be sickness, let your will be done. Whether it be hardness, let your will be done. Whether it be persecution for righteousness sake, let your will be done. We ask you for wisdom this afternoon because we lack it. We have a little, but we ask you to give us more that we can, oh God, be perfected in the areas of our life where you would have us to be perfected, that we can continue to go forward in being made partakers of your divine nature. This I ask in your son's name, who fulfill all things in obedience to your words in the volume of the book, in Jesus' name. Oh, praise the Lord. My cup is full and spread over. Praise God. As the, the teacher stated, the, the scripture stated that if we need wisdom, if we lack any wisdom, we should ask. Ask of God. And for me, I can never have enough. And my desire is continually seek after it. Seek for wisdom, seek for knowledge, seek for understanding. Show me, Lord, let me know. Because you know what? I want to please Him. One of us declaring all your ways, acknowledging my name will direct your path. So I'm, I'm seeking today. Every day I'm seeking. I need wisdom, Lord. I need knowledge. I need understanding. When I read your word, give me your understanding. Even sometimes I may not be able to express it to you, but let me understand it. Teach me how to walk in your way. God bless you, Brother Earl. And may I lift up the countenance and be gracious unto you and to continue to give you peace. Praise the Lord. At this junction, our sister, Shaman will be leaving our midst for a few days. And um, we're asking that uh, Overseer would pray for her. But before he should come, I'm going to be asking Deacon Walker if he could collect the offering for us. Praise the Lord. As uh, the four God preachers said, I need thee, oh, I need thee. Can we sing a refrain of that song? Praise the Lord, while the offering is being taken up. Praise the Lord. I need thee, oh, I need thee.
before we should go any further, um, today's Modern Sunday. <laughs> today's Modern Sunday, and uh, Sister Sandra would like to hand some cards out. So I'll give her after the prayer. Okay, that's fine. Okay, Overseer, could you pray for Sister Shopping for us and bless the offering? Praise the Lord. and your love towards us that even at the time we are before your presence still and we are in the land of the living we thank you for the instruction of your word that you have given to us that give us the assurance and the strength to continue to serve thee <laughs> in not just in the corruptible life but in eternal life which comes from your son we worship you and we give you praise. We thank you that, Lord, as you have shown us that a wise man will receive instruction and we will increase in learning. And not only increase in learning, but we'll be able to demonstrate those things that come from you, that take us from mortal into immortality. We worship you. Here's your daughter, the same loving God, who have served you all these years in this house. Very faithful, Lord, always active in the office that you have been placed. Lord, it seems as if that there is, it seems at this time to travel somewhere for a few weeks. But we thank you that, Lord, nothing that we do, we can do without asking your guidance. And certainly at this time, as we come at this time, we lay our hands upon her, and we are asking you, loving Father, that you will guide her in this venture that she's going to be placing herself in. We don't know how long she'll be away for, but we thank you that every day, our life is always in your hand. And since, Lord, you have changed us inwardly, and have given us eternal life in the soul. We ask that you preserve us in this spot, in, in preserver in our body. That our soul, O oh God, will remain in the body and you'll bring her back to us, body, soul, and spirit. We pray against every powers of darkness. We pray against every snare, every trap. Lord, we pray you'll make the way. Or you will make the way for us where there is no way. Bless her now, we pray. Bless and prosper our going. Yes, we set our forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Father, we ask for you also bless the offering that's being collected from your people this afternoon. And even as we collect the carnal Thank substance, you. we put Thank their you. lives before you. We ask that. More than the offering, you bless their lives this week. Bless their going out, bless their coming in, bless their uprising, bless their downsetting. And in all your ways, we ask you, bless them as I acknowledge you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, brethren. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brethren. Praise the Lord. It is a small token, but none of us would be here without mothers. No matter praise, which praise the Lord. Praise praise the Lord. Lord. And you know, there's mothers in here to say that we do appreciate Pastor Shirley who's sitting and she's got these cards. And I'm just going to call your name out. And please, if you can't come, just let me know and I'll run over to you. But we're going to sing this through praise. Um, Jesus, feel a fence all around me every day. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus, Mama Joy. Thank <laughs> you. 